Resuming the series of rites with which we started weeks back and we spoke firstly about the greatest right which is the right of Allah and we second that with the greatest right of any human which is the right of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And immediately after that comes the right of parents. It is so significant, so important, so vital of a right that Allah Azza wa Jal paralleled it with Tawheed. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانِ Your Lord has commanded that you worship none but him and to parents kind treatment. Scholars said that the importance of the rights of parents stem from the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal made them the cause of the existence of the child. In addition, to the suffering they go through in the process until that child becomes an adult, a man or a woman. The mother bears that child, the pregnancy, and then suckling and then caring, and the father works hard to put bread on the table, upbrings the child, they both have restless nights, they exert all efforts to make sure that you and me as a child have a comfortable life. They give up everything. They sacrifice everything for the sake of the comfort and the well-being of that child. And by nature, man likes to be better than those around him. In one case, it's an exception. The only one a person would like to see better than him is his own child. They work hard to make sure that they become better than them in all aspects. And for this reason, there is no child, no son or daughter can ever pay off that debt. Fully fulfill the rights of parents. As the Prophet ﷺ himself said, and this is reported by an Imam Muslim, he said, No child will ever pay off his parents. Never! Don't you ever think that by doing what you're doing, you can ever pay off the debt you have to your parents. It is a great debt that cannot be paid off, regardless of what you do. But we strive hard to reach as close as possible. Their rights are great. And the continuation of this very verse with which we started lists the rights or some of the rights of the parents. As we said, Allah started by saying, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Right number one. Kind treatment. You see, in order to reflect how important this right is, Allah attached it to fulfilling Tawheed. Tawheed, fulfilling Tawheed is the objection, is the objective of the existence of this creation, man and jinn. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ So fulfilling that is so important. And then Allah attached this 
to it to tell us how important it is to be kind to parents. And then Allah continues to say, Whether one of them or both, reach old age while with you. What is the right listed here? While with you. The people of knowledge said, this is to instruct the child that at old age your parents should be with you and under your direct care. Don't throw them in an elderly home. You take care of them. You keep them with you. You care for them. You fulfill their needs. Directly you. Why? Because the older the person becomes, the more dependent he becomes, the more attention he needs, the more care he requires. Then, this is the next right. Be polite. Don't show them that you are overburdened and discontent by caring for them, by fulfilling their rights, by being dutiful to them. And Allah used the expression uf. Uf is simply the air you blow when you want to express discomfort or discontent. That's rude. That is part of undutifulness, uquq. To respond or to say that in front of your parents. Let alone those who raise their voices, who stare at the eyes of the parent, who roll their eyes when they get a command, or they're asked not to do something. Oh, like this, right? Start waving their hands, expressing anger, talking with a tone that, oh, come on, you don't understand. Your generation, you're an old generation. I get a lot of complaints like this. You don't understand, you simply don't understand. Yes, we don't understand. Parents don't understand. Just like we used to think our parents didn't understand. Well, that's not correct. Allah says, Uff is prohibited. As little as uff. Don't say as little as uff. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ Then, وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Don't show disrespect. Don't be angry at them. Keep in mind the difference in status between you and them. When you walk in the presence of your parents, remember you're not walking into a company of friends. You're not talking to your wife or your brother or sister. No, the difference is massive between you and them. These are parents. So be careful. Be careful, because the consequence is severe, and it's fast in this life before the hereafter. So beware. The warning is stern. The outcome is unbearable. 
what one can face can make him wish death. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْلٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Some of the scholars said, exaggerate in showing respect and in honoring your peers. Exaggerate. It's not just simply respect them and honor them. No, you need to exaggerate in that. To the point that you feel, wow, this is too much. Well, it's never too much. I've got news for you. It is never too much when it comes to parents. The next right, وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Which is the exact opposite of what preceded it. And say to them a noble word. Talk to them with gentleness, with softness. Show kindness, show tolerance. Make your tone of voice a tone of voice of someone who is afraid. Ibn Sirin used to say, when my mother called upon me once, I had to fast after I responded to her, at your service, mother. He was asked, why? لَبَّيْكِ أُمَّهِ I am at your service. He had to do a righteous deed. And when he was asked why, he said, I said it in high tone. So I feared that that was disrespect to her. Look how sensitive they were. Look how mindful they were when it comes to dealing with parents. And then, وَخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ And lower to them the wing of humility out of mercy. A believer is commanded not to humiliate himself to anything, to anyone, under any circumstance. Under any situation, with this exception, to parents. Allah says, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Don't weaken and don't be saddened while you are the honorable. If you were believers, so a sign of true belief is not to humiliate yourself to others, except to parents. Allah commands me and you to humiliate ourselves to them. And look at the beautiful expression Allah used. He used the word, the wing. You know, birds use this instrument to rise high, to fly. Well, Allah uses it for us to go down, signifying to us that the more you go down, the more you humiliate yourself and humble yourself to them, the higher you will go with Allah in rank. The more you humiliate yourself, the higher Allah will raise you in this dunya. The higher your status will be amongst people in this life. In addition to the higher rank you will obtain in the hereafter. But look, a person who is humiliated usually does it forcefully. He feels compelled. He has no other choice. He's got a boss. He's got, a, he's got someone above him. Right? Who is oppressing him? Right? So he feels humiliated. But with the parents, you do it out of mercy to them. Out of full love. 
Ibn Abbas عنه, said a child with his parent should be like a slave who has committed a sin or a mistake rather who was guilty of a mistake who has committed a mistake and he is standing shivering out of fear humbling himself instead in front of his very aggressive harsh master and owner this is how you need to stand in front of your parents some parents say my child will be sitting in my presence putting his legs on the table right in the presence of his father or mother or even grandfather and grandmother what kind of attitude what kind of manners are these where's the humility as a matter of fact some of the scholars said when your parents are sitting sit on the floor so you won't be at the same level you need to be at a lower level because you are at a lower level with Allah Azza wa when compared to your parents. And the lower you are, the higher you become. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. So two people, two men walking. So he asked the one in the back. One was ahead of the other. So he asked the one in the back, who is this man? He said, this is my father. He said, oh. I advise you never to call him by his name. Never to walk in front of him. And never to talk before he finishes. And then Allah goes to say, وَقُرْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا And say, Oh Allah, have mercy on them. Like they raised me when I was young. You see, because of the narration of the Prophet ﷺ, in which he said, No child can ever pay off his parent. The need of supplicating for the parents comes at the end of this verse. You're instructed to supplicate Allah Azza wa for your parents. With this, you will try to fulfill the rights and the need of supplication after their death is even greater in importance because it is a time when they cannot benefit them, them, themselves anymore. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, said, when the son of Adam dies, his deeds stop. Except, and then he mentioned, a righteous son or child rather, who supplicates for him. He وسلم, made a sign of righteousness of that child is that he supplicates for his parents. And it goes without saying that obedience to parents is a default right they have over us. One needs to hasten when a father or a mother instructs them to do something, to fulfill it. To refrain from something, to stay away from it. Except in the case of a wife. Because the right of the husband takes precedence over the right of parents in Islam. And if there is something that you're instructed to do by your parents, 
which you could not do. Out of your control, scholars said you need to rush and apologize and justify with tender and kind and soft words and make sure that they're not angry and that they understand why you did not do it. And I conclude with spending on parents. You see, spending and caring for your parents is not a favor you're conferring upon them. It's not a favor from you. It's a right upon you. So don't you ever make them feel that you're doing them a favor. Ibn al-Mundhir, may Allah have mercy on him, conveyed the consensus of scholars that it is an obligation upon the son to spend on his parents when they're in a time of need because it becomes more confirmed. The obligation becomes more confirmed. The Prophet ﷺ, and this is reported by Al-Hakim, classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, وسلم, the best provision one consumes is that which he earns himself. And your children are part of your earnings. So consume the wealth or from the wealth of your child. Al-Kasani said, the Prophet ﷺ did not put a condition for the right of the parents to consume from the wealth of their son. He made it general. Consume from the wealth of your child. Unless there is a confirmed harm if the parents do so, then they need to refrain from that. Or if they're taking it, to give it to another son, his brother or his sister. Then, and he is harmed by that, then a parent should not be doing that. I ask Allah to enable us to fulfill the rights of our parents. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu ma tasma'una wa astaghfiruna. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. With regards to parents' rights, children are one of five types. There are five types of children with regards to fulfilling the rights of parents. Number one, one who disobeys, one who doesn't listen, one who doesn't fulfill any of the rights or some of the rights, one who is undutiful, who practices عقوق. Well, he is the person who made himself deserving of the curse of Allah and the wrath of Allah As the Prophet said in two different narrations that are reported by Imam Al-Tabarani. In the first one, he said, مَلْعُونٌ مَنْ عَقَّ وَارِدَيْهِ Cursed is the one who is undutiful to his parents. So beware of not fulfilling the rights of your parents because you subject yourself to the curse of Allah And this is classified as identic by an Almani. And then the second narration, he وسلم, said, the wrath of Allah Azza wa Jal results from the wrath of the parent. So when you make your father or your mother angry, you make Allah angry. And this was classified as sound by Al Albani. This is the first type. The second type who fulfills the right, who does what they say, right? But then shows this, 
shows discontent, right? Reminds them with the favor, you know, I've did this to you, I've done this for you, right? Well, this person has fulfilled the right, but he's sinful. The third type is the type who fulfills the rights without showing any discontent or anger or expresses that he's overburdened by this, but deep in his heart, he's not happy. Then this type is not rewarded for what he's doing. He's fulfilling, but he's not rewarded. Why? Because he's not doing it full heartedly. It's not fully from the heart. Allah looks at our hearts. And the consequence of the deed is based on what's in the heart. The fourth type is the type who immediately hastens to fulfill the rights of his parents. Full-heartedly, with joy and content. Well, these are few and they're greatly rewarded. But the last one is a very rare type. It is the type who hastens to do what parents want before they ask him or her to do. That is rare to happen. I saw an incident a few days ago that split my heart. I couldn't handle it. I almost broke in tears. A young man who is accompanying his father, who is one of the scholars. And this boy is probably 17. As we were walking out of the masjid, the Sheikh put his feet in his shoes and he did not slip his foot into the chute completely. He actually bent the back of it and walked with it as if it was a pair of slippers. The boy did something. I couldn't help. I was talking to the sheikh. I couldn't help but pause and just stare at the boy to the extent that the sheikh stopped and looked at me. The boy immediately sunk down on his knees and slipped his finger under the heel of his father and flipped the back of the shoe. Of the first shoe. And then he went to the other side and he stuck his, foot, his finger and made his father wear his shoe properly. Now the, proper, the father didn't say that, didn't request that. And I am positive he did not expect that. But this is the rare type. When you do something unexpectedly, without someone calling for it or asking for it, and these last two will see bliss in their life, Pleasure in their hearts. Allah will, will facilitate their affairs. Because they earn the pleasure of Allah by fulfilling the rights of parents. And finally, brothers and sisters, the question we need to the important question we need to ask ourselves. Which one of these five types am I? In which one of these five do I fit? You see, being kind and beautiful and fulfilling the rights of parents is not simply to walk up to your father or mother and kiss their hand or kiss their forehead. It's not a job that children 
hand over one to the other as if it's a, it's a burden they just throw from one to the other. No, it's a competition to enter Jannah through that door, the door of parents. Fulfilling that right is to hasten to the pleasure of your parents, to do what they want, to do what you know pleases them, and to refrain what you know displeases them. You know, even if you feel that your mom feels like drinking a cup of tea, you don't know the joy that you will bring to her heart by rushing to the kitchen and preparing a cup of tea and bringing it. You don't know the massive reward you will get for this cup of tea. Fulfilling the rights of parents is a continuous process until we die, not until they die. It's a continuous task that ends with our death. Because even after their death, their rights continue. We ask Allah to forgive us for our shortcomings and to help us fulfill the rights of our parents. اللهم اغفر لنا في تقصيرنا مع آبائنا وأمهاتنا اللهم اغفر لهما وارحمهما كما ربونا صغارا